We're back in the shack of the WTF and tonight I am going to show you two objects which you can buy off eBay relatively cheaply. That is a GU50 valve, Russian, and that, ladies and gents, is a cheap Chinese inverter. And I'm going to show you how we can use both of these to make a reasonably powered transmitter that will cover three bands and do AM and CW and will quite easily, potentially, you could get round the world with it. Now just a bit of background, GU50, Russian, pentode, plate dissipation 40 watts but you can get at least 60 to 70 watts out of one of these, RF that is. Very useful valve, built like a Russian T34 and as I mentioned plentiful on eBay, the Russians made loads of these and you can use these in tube transmitters, you can use them in audio amps. These, you can just see that, are inverters which you can get off AliExpress or eBay. Quite handy, they only cost about 10 or 12 pounds each and they're rated at 500 watts although I'm not sure if they'll do that. Very basic um, switching inverters, four transistors, two FETs on the high and the low side of this PWM uh, generator SG3525 high frequency transformer and these apparently they have two windings I hope you can see that so there's two windings there 0 to 360 and 18 volts and, the, and these things produce AC so you have to rectify them and if you want more volts you can voltage double them which is what I've done on this transmitter which I'm going to show you so they're very useful for, for powering valve transmitters or tube transmitters or tube anything actually uh, very 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 good and uh, quite handy and as I said not that expensive so what I've done two it one GU50 one Chinese inverter let's let's put them all together and see if we can make a useful ham radio transmitter right guys here it is this is the transmitter that I've made. One GU50 in the PA and for the AM modulated by a pair of GU50s. And I've been building this for about mm, two or three weeks. And what I wanted initially is I wanted a transmitter that would cover say two or three bands, AM, CW, VFO controlled and uh, mm, about 40 watts output something like that not too much didn't really need that much to be honest you know anything like 100 watts 200 300 watts um, it's probably not that necessary and this is more than adequate for QSOs around the UK and it will do on 40 and 20 potentially a lot further so um, as you can see this is the front panel we've got a meter there which measures the various currents anode current grid current I've got a knob there for the VFO and as you can see here we've got a big chunky cable which is for 12 volts uh, input and I will show you what that's all about when I turn it over because as I said <clears throat> this runs off um, all runs off three Chinese uh, inverters for all the HT for the valves so therefore uh, it runs off 12 volts uh, no need for any sort of heavy iron apart from the modulation transformer which is a good old-fashioned Woden UM1 so just to show you what we've got here <clears throat> so that in there that's a neoprene uh, jacket to cover the VFO which I think apparently is an old Collins VFO which um, came out of some something I'm not sure probably a uh, receiver or something 
So the two valves next to it are the speech amplifier. We've got 12AU7 and an EF86. And those are our two modulator tubes, GU50s. And then the PA compartment. Got a GU50 there. And that little thing there is a QQV03-10, which is our driver valve, which a lot of people are surprised about because they say, oh, you can't really use those because they're more designed for VHF, but uh, that actually works pretty well. It's a, it's actually a double tetrode. Uh, so you can wire that up in parallel and it works, gives quite a lot of output as a driver. So quite a nifty little valve. So that's the uh, the PA section. Just a word about GU50s. Uh, so as, you, as I mentioned before, they are Russian pentodes. And if you're interested in making something with a GU50, because they are very cheap and there's plenty of them, beware the bases, okay? Now if you look on eBay, that is what you'll find quite readily available for a GU50 base. And these things uh, are made in China, they're ceramic, but they're absolute crap. Okay, I've, I wasted about three valves with these. When you put them in the sockets, they, for some reason they don't align up properly. And I broke uh, at least three valves in one of these. Okay, so avoid at all costs. If you're going to make anything with a GU50, use one of these. These are the original sockets that were made in Russia. And as you can see, they come with a nice little aluminium uh, flip top thing. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to open this with one hand, but I'll try. Oops, there we go. It always resembles a toilet seat. But these are the things to get. They don't bend the pins and they actually built properly. So anyway, there we go. So that's the, uh, that's the transmitter. Uh, I'll turn it over just to show you the underside and uh, how we built this. It works pretty well actually, I've had a few QSOs with it and uh, on AM uh, it's not too bad, the audio is a bit scratchy but um, might be due to the mic more than anything else. But certainly on CW uh, it's pretty good. Um, VFO is reasonably stable, uh, probably drifts a little bit but uh, on 80 meters it's not too bad but the drift which is about 200 Hertz um, every, 150 200 Hertz every over so you have to just keep adjusting it slightly um, it's a bit annoying on uh, 40 meters and obviously 20 because it uses a frequency multiplier so uh, so there you go anyway I'll um, quickly turn it over and you can have a look on the underside right okay chaps and ladies if there are any uh, this is the underside of the, uh, the transmitter and at first glance it does look uh, a bit complicated um, <laughs> the wiring's um, uh, a little bit uh, haphazard well I wouldn't say it's haphazard but uh, I mean I know where everything is but <laughs> it, uh, it does look uh, probably a little bit complicated but we'll go through a few things uh, so what we got here is essentially the modulator and the power supplies so I've got three uh, inverters here. These are the Chinese inverters I was telling you about. So one does the HT for the for the power amplifier. This one does the 300 volts or thereabouts for the um, driver tube and also for the modulator speech amplifiers. And up in the corner there, we have a, another power supply which does the HT for the GU50s. What we've got here is a voltage doubler because these Chinese inverters produce about 380 volts so for the HT we want about 750 or thereabouts for GU50s so what I've done is I've used a voltage doubler and you'll notice there that the, the uh, capacitors, the filter caps, are relatively small. This is because the switching frequency of the, of the uh, Chinese inverters is about 20 kilohertz. So you don't need to have massive uh, smoothing caps, which is a good, good, good thing really. 
and the little um, transformer here is a um, another um, a high frequency transformer which is fed by the 18 volt winding of one of these power supplies and that gives us our negative bias supply which we need uh, for the modulator. So looking at the uh, RF side of things so on this side here we've got the frequency multipliers which are in the grid circuit for the GU50 that's that is the grid tuning capacitor. This series of Zener diodes here are basically for the negative bias because the voltage that comes out of the power supply is about minus 200 odd and we need to drop it a little bit and regulate it so that's what these uh, Zeners do. And then we've got some big resistors here so this is all for this this is the screen resistor for the GU50 and these and um, that's also another part of the GU50 screen supply and then we've got um, these here are for the uh, uh, the, the grid bias uh, grid leak resistor for the GU50 because the um, driver valve is quite pokey you need quite a pokey resistor in the grid circuit so that's why it's you know it's about 10 watt or 5 watt resistor there this little circuit board here, that's the buffer amplifier for the VFO because the VFO is not sufficient on its own to drive the uh, the driver. So we we've got two a couple of transistor a couple of transistors there which make a buffer amplifier for the um, uh, for the VFO there. If you can see that, and. I'll just see if I can zoom in on that circuit board there. That is actually a what we call a precision power supply uh, for the buffer amplifier. Because if the buffer amplifier doesn't have a regulated power supply, then then also that's going to uh, cause drift. And there's another similar power supply up in the corner. Uh, you can't really see it so well, but it's up there somewhere. In fact, the VFO, um, even though it runs off 12 volts. Uh, what I've done with that is I've actually used a DC DC converter so to give me 24 volts or thereabouts or 1824 and then I feed that into a precision power supply which is basically a voltage regulator with a a uh, temperature regulated diode uh, to keep the voltage exactly at about 11 volts or thereabouts and uh, because the problem is if you just run off 12 volts every time you key the transmitter your 12 volts is going to sag and that's going to cause drift on the VFO so you have to be pretty um, you know uh, quite um, precise with the uh, power supply uh, from the for the VFO otherwise you're going to get drift even even if it's um, you know even if, we're only, even if you're only talking about millivolts it's going to it's going to drift so that's the um, transmitter underside. What I'll show you in a minute is just one of these inverters in more detail just to, sh just to give you an idea of how they work. Right here's one of these inverters that I was telling you about and you can pick these up off eBay or Aliexpress. So I think they're about about I think 11 or 12 pounds or thereabouts but they're quite good for, for you know a ready-built module and uh, for power supplies and everything, I think you know they're uh, they're not bad, especially for it saves you sort of buying heavy transformers, which are becoming more and more rare these days. And what they are, so you've got four FETs there, and these are two in parallel on the high side and two on the low side. So it's a standard sort of topology, and uh, this is a SG three five two five. Let's see if I can get a bit closer. Uh, PWM chip and again this is a quite a standard uh, chip for generating um, PWM and uh, it feeds into a high frequency transformer underside is fairly standard and you've got these windings here 18 volts 
320 and 0. Um, so these actually give you quite a lot of variation and if you and if you want more volts you can voltage double these quite easily. Uh, so it works pretty well. Now what I would say with these, now these work quite well uh, what I did find with these, I, they work quite well for the uh, PA of the transmitter and the driver. But the problem I did have with these is that um, for the uh, modulator, for the HT, so the HT supplying the modulator tubes, uh, it was a bit of a problem because the DC output of this goes into the uh, center tap of the uh, primary, the modulation transformer. And that is an, uh, effectively an inductive load. And what I found with this is that um, these don't really like uh, you know, to be run on an inductive load, especially when you're pushing a bit of current. And what, 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 what I noticed was that um, if I'd increased the sort of standing current of the uh, modulator tubes, these things would start squealing. And that was basically due to the uh, switching frequency lowering. Because these things are not regulated, unfortunately. They're very basic. Um, you know they're pretty good at handling you know reasonable amounts of power uh, and they're pretty good into a resistive load so they'll do a valve you know you can power a valve uh, power amplifier off them reasonably well but uh, I, I did find with the modulator it was um, I did have some issues but uh, providing you don't push the modulator power too much uh, they're okay and they won't start squealing because once they start squealing uh, you're going to get um, noise coming through onto your audio. Uh, so something to bear in mind. Okay, so um, I can give you a quick demo. I'll, I'll fire it up and just show you what sort of power we get out of this. Uh, this will be on CW. And you have a good idea of the sort of uh, capabilities of this uh, homebrew transmitter. And it uh, might inspire some of you who are into building your own stuff to have a go. I mean, you can certainly build something a little less complicated. And uh, with these inverters, it certainly reduces the uh, uh, the weight and you can still then use valves or tubes, which I think makes things a lot simpler. And certainly they're a lot more robust than transistorized stuff. And you can easily make yourself uh, a nice little CW transmitter with a, you know, either GU50 or something else and using one of these uh, inverters. So let's fire it up and we'll give you a quick demo. Okay, uh, got it all switched on and uh, we're into a dummy load. I've got my power meter there, which uh, is on the 0 to 30 watts. No, it's not, it's on 0 to 300, my mistake. And we'll give you a quick demo. So what I'm gonna do is quickly Key the transmitter. So we're getting about forty five watts there. So that's not too bad. On an aerial, which it seems to be uh, seems to prefer, I can get about sixty watts with this uh, when it's tuned up. So it's pretty good for a, you know, a single valve transmitter. On AM, the power, the carrier power drops down to about twenty-five watts, uh, which is kind of like what you'd expect. Uh, that's on AM, so not not too bad really. Um, so all in all, quite a good. Uh, Quite a good build, quite pleased with it, so I'm going to play around with it, have a few QSOs and uh, see how we get on. Anyway, till the next video, 73s and keep going.